Hi, welcome back to Therapy Designs. If you're new to this channel, my name is Kelly and this channel is all about teaching you how to create print-on-demand designs using Canva. So if that is something that you're interested in, please do stick around. So in today's video, I'm gonna go over how to do this design right here. Um, it looks easy. This one actually is a little bit more time consuming than some of the others, but somebody did ask me how I could take a hollow text and fill in the inside of it with a clipping mask. And so that is what I'm doing here is I'm taking what is otherwise a hollow text and putting um, a clipping mask inside of the letters. If you would like to learn how to do this, stick around, just be aware that this is a little bit more of a detailed technique. Um, so I, I hope that it is something that you can find a good way to use in the future. Okay, so right now I'm logged onto Canva. This is just the home page right here. I'm gonna let you know right now that I do use Canva Pro. So if you're not using Pro, I definitely recommend getting it. It is only like $13 a month and almost all of the features I use are indeed Pro features. So that is my caveat there. Um, from this page, we are gonna simply go to uh, the top right hand corner where it says create a design. I'm gonna click that. And then we're gonna go down to custom size at the bottom. And we are gonna select 4,500 by 5,400 pixels. That is what I typically design in when I'm designing for t-shirts. And so I'll click that and it's gonna pull up my blank page here. And I'm gonna close that. So now I'm on my blank page. I'm gonna go ahead and select a background color. I do typically like to um, design for black. That is gonna be you know, what I'm gonna optimize for. So I'll just go ahead and start with the background color up at the top left-hand corner where it says background color, click that. I'm gonna select black and so this is where I'm starting. And so for this video, I did have somebody who had asked me a question about taking hollow text and filling it in with something. And so I thought about that came up with a good way to go about doing that. It does take a little bit of effort, but it is worth it. So if that's something that you've wondered how to do, definitely pay attention here. We're gonna start with a text box. I'm gonna do a really easy design for this one. I just want to go ahead and put vacay mode on. So I'm gonna start with vacay, oops, mode on. Okay, so real simple, real easy. For this technique, you're gonna wanna use short words just because it is a little bit more labor intensive. You don't want anything that's gonna be too small and you don't want anything that's gonna be too in depth or it will take you a long time to do. So something short like this or even shorter is gonna be optimal for this particular method. But now that I've got my vacay mode on, let's go ahead and pick a font. So I'm gonna come up to the top left and I'm gonna select the font area and this is where I'm gonna be searching for, um, what we're gonna look for is outlines. So if I put outline, it's gonna give me all of the outlined fonts. And so some of them are pretty basic. Some of them are, you know, a little bit more detailed, some really cool ones like that. Um, so there's a lot of different ways you can go with this. Um, my recommendation for this technique is that you want it to have relatively thick lines. So something like that. If the lines are too little, it's going to be a little bit harder when we have to go to fill it in. And so look for something that has a little bit thick lines, but definitely do something that's a little bit fun and unique. So if you don't pick something fun and unique, then you can always just use a regular font and put an outline around it. So. Um, for this particular technique, you want something a little fun. So this is a good one right here that I've used. Um, this one is what, rig, rig solid bold halftone. So if you're looking for a halftone, this is a good one here that I've used. Um, some nice thick ones here look kind of nice. The one I wanted to show you today, let me see if I can find it was this one right here. I liked the way that the letters kind of overlapped. So I had the shadow overlapping each letter. So I definitely liked that. It was a little bit different and you can't quite get the same kind of look when you just throw a shadow on the letters because you won't necessarily get that overlap. So I did like the way this one looked. I'm gonna go ahead and bring these closer together. So if I come up to where it says spacing, I'm just gonna go ahead and bring that line spacing a lot closer together. So something like that, that way I can make this nice and big. I want it to be, you know, really big in the page. 
the bigger it is, the easier it's going to be to work with. It also just looks better on a sh on a shirt if you make it nice and large. Oop, made a sale. Um, so something like that. And of course you can play with the letter spacing too. So these letters do overlap. I like that. If I wanted them to overlap more, I could again go up to the spacing and this time I could go to letter spacing and I could bring these kind of, oops, it's not doing all of them. Hold on. Let me undo that. Let me go back. So if you want to go back, just go ahead and hit this back button. It's really easy to take you back to right where you were. I want to make sure I'm highlighting the whole thing because I do want to show you with everything. So now I've got my letter spacing and I can bring them in. Now the problem with this, as you can see, I'm starting to get that sort of overlap there. So I don't want that, but just so you can see how you could, you know, bring them a little bit closer. I'm gonna stick right here. I've got a good overlap, but I don't have anything cutting into the letter in front of it. So that looks pretty good right there. I like the way that looks. So I got my vacay mode on. And so from here, what we're gonna do is a similar technique that we did when I showed you how to do cutouts, only it's gonna be sort of the opposite of a cutout. So instead of cutting out the letters, we are gonna restore the inside of the letters, but cut out the backgrounds. Um, because when we go to do the, um, the background removal, it'll show you on sort of a light gray and white checkered background, it can be hard sometimes to see if you're using a white font. So for this technique, I'm gonna go ahead and change the font color just so that it's easier for us to see. So it doesn't matter what color you use, pick anything you want, something a little darker would be good, that way you can really see it. So I'm just gonna go with this blue color here. Again, really doesn't matter what you choose right now. So I've got vacay mode on, and what I'm gonna go ahead and do is download this, and I'm gonna download as is. So I'm gonna keep this black background, so that's important. I'm not doing the transparent for this one. So exactly as is, we are just gonna download it. And once it's downloaded, now I'm gonna open a new page. And on my new page, I'm gonna go ahead and put what I just downloaded. So I'm gonna go over to the left-hand side where it says Uploads. If you click on that, and then you click Upload Files, we can go ahead and upload what we just put on. Perfect, so now I can just take this, click it. It's gonna move it right onto my page. I'll close that. And so now I've got my vacate mode on here. Now you can't tell because I did black on black, but if I was to change the background color here to anything else, you can now see that vacay mode is on a black box just like it is above. And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use some photo effects on it and we're gonna go ahead and just do the background removal. Now when we do the background removal, we'll be getting rid of all the black. So that should be all the black outside of the text, but it should also be all the black inside of the text. That's where we're gonna have to do a little bit of manual work and restore everything inside because what I want is for the inside of the text to stay black, but to lose the background. And so you'll see when I go to do this, I'm just gonna hit edit image up at the top. We're gonna to go to background removal, remover. Give it a second. Perfect there. So this is what I would want if I wanted, you know, just the background removal, you know, clear, <laughs> clear see-through letters, but I don't want the see-through letters. I need solid letters because what I want to do is be able to put a clipping mask inside this area. And so in order to put a clipping mask in there, I'm going to have to have something solid to put it on. Um, so here's where we're going to have to do a little bit of restoring. So if you come up to where it says there's an erase and restore button, you're just going to go ahead and hit restore. And now you can see it's on the sort of white and gray checkered background. So if I had used white lettering, it would be kind of hard to see. That's why I went ahead and just used the blue. And so now what we're going to be doing is restoring. So you can see when I click this, it's going to put black inside these letters here. Um, and so that's what I'm going to have to do for this whole thing. So it is going to take you a little bit of time and I will go ahead and fast forward through this so you don't have to watch me restore every last little letter. Um, that's why it's important, by the way, that you have some thick outlines and that it's relatively, you know, a simple design. You don't want anything too complex or it'll take you a while. Don't worry about if you overlap anything, any of these um, lines here. It doesn't have to be super perfect, but what we're going to end up doing is putting a clipping mask just on the black area. Um, so make sure that you, you know, get that black area exactly as you want it, and then we'll go from there and you'll, you'll kind of see how this goes. So I'm gonna just go ahead and focus on this. Um, gotta give me a few minutes here. 
Okay, so as you can see, I've gotten this first uh, word mostly done. So I just went ahead and used sort of this big size initially. And then when I'm going to get the corners, all I'll do is take this brush size down so that it's a little bit smaller. And then I can go ahead and get into the corners Oops, got it on erase, put on restore. And then I can go ahead and get into the corners and you know make sure I get all the little details in there. As you can see, I've also gone ahead and zoomed in. So if you're having trouble with some of the little details, if you go to the bottom of the page, you can always zoom in and make it as big as you need to so that you can really see what you're doing. Again, it is a little bit time consuming, but you do get faster as you go. Um, one tip that I did want to say is that because we're restoring what was already there, it's okay if you overlap these blue areas. So I can overlap these blue areas, nothing will happen. What I want to be careful is not to go outside of the outline because then what I'm going to have is that and that I don't want. So if you accidentally do that, again, no big deal. Go ahead and get your erase tool out and then you can erase that. And it's also okay if you erase a little bit of the blue, by the way, because the blue doesn't really matter. It's the black area that we're trying to put the clipping mask on specifically. So don't worry if you erase a little bit of the blue. If the blue line isn't perfect, that's not a big deal. Just make sure your black doesn't go outside any of these blue lines. So that was just the little caveat I wanted to make with that. And with that, I'm going to continue um, filling these in. Okay, so you can see the first word is totally done. So I'm just going to have to do this two more times. Um, try not to get frustrated. Um, like I said, it does take a little bit of time, but you will get faster at it as you go. And of course, always start with the kind of big areas and don't worry about overlapping anything like that. So any areas that you can get to really easily, like through there, go ahead and do that nice and fast. And then when it comes to the edges, then you can spend a little bit more time um, but we can see when it comes to just sort of the areas with the blue that I'm, I'm easily able to overlap, I can kind of go through these relatively quickly. Oops, I'm going to have to cut that out a little bit, so, but it's no big deal. So you'll get faster as you go if you're starting to get a little bit frustrated. Don't worry about it and just keep plugging on. But now you'll see why it's important to choose your words and your font wisely for this, okay? So you wanna make it as easy on yourself as possible. Though there are some really cool fonts that'll have like different like lines and elements in them. And if you're willing to put in the time, you can get some really cool effects out of those as well. So I've got word two done and you may notice that when I went to clean it up, I managed to erase a little bit of the blue in different areas so that the blue doesn't necessarily look, and I can even do something like that just to prove my point, the blue doesn't look super great. It does not matter about the blue. Again, we're only worried about getting the black part for this. So if you cut into the blue at all like that, don't even worry about it. Just make sure that your black stays inside the edges and you're fine. So as long as the black doesn't go out the edges, we're good. And if you happen to cut into the blue a little bit, no big deal, don't worry. So again, you can do it a little bit quick, a little bit dirty, as long as your black looks good. Now I got one more word to go, so almost there. Okay. So now we can see what I did there. I just went ahead and I filled in all of the letters, but we got rid of the background. So now we've got pretty much a two-tone word where we've got the blue and we've got the black. Now the way that this is gonna work moving forward is we're gonna use a clipping mask and it can be any clipping mask that you want. So it doesn't really matter for the black part. And then the blue part, we're gonna go ahead and just put on top like an outline. And that can again be any color that you want. And if you wanted to, you could use a clipping mask on that too. So you could do two different clipping masks if you wanted to. Um, Depends how busy you wanna make it and what exactly you're designing for. I'm gonna go ahead and just use a solid color for this, um, for the sort of outline look. And then I'm gonna use um, a clipping mask for the black, but you can see how it'll be done real quick. So I'm just gonna go hit, hit, done. And there is my vacay mode on. And so it started like this. Now, if I wanted to take just this right here and download this as a transparent background, that would give me the outline. So if I wanted to do a clipping mask on the outline part, that's how I would do it. This would be my frame, okay? So just so you know, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna stick with this, the solid 
but I am gonna do a clipping mask for the black. So I'm gonna take this and I want it to fill the whole page so that it's essentially the same size as the one above it. So because this was just downloaded as is, if I go ahead, I'll bring that up, and have it fill the entire page, I now make sure that it is the same size as the one above. And so from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put vacay mode on and this is gonna be my frame. And I'm gonna go ahead and download the second page here. This one will have a transparent background and I'm just looking at page two. And so I'm gonna go ahead and download that. And so here is my frame. And now what we're gonna do is pick our clipping mask. Now it can be anything that you want, really it doesn't matter. It can be a pattern, it can be a photo, it could be a gradient, lots of cool gradients. Um, because I just want this to really stand out so you guys can see, um, I'm just gonna make a point here. I'm gonna go ahead and do something tie-dye. So something really just sort of fun tie-dye. So I'm gonna go over to the side tabs again and I'm gonna come up to where it says elements. And then from here, I can go ahead and just do a little tie-dye search. And there's all sorts of tie-dyes. Doesn't matter if you wanna choose photos or if you wanna choose graphics. I'm just gonna go ahead and just stick with this first one right here. It's a graphic, it's bright colored and it will pretty much make my point pretty good. So I'm just gonna go ahead, drag it out so it's covering the whole thing. Kind of position it wherever I want. And so this is now going to be my tie-dye mask. Um, and so I'm just gonna download this page now. And because it's filling the whole page, I don't care if it's a transparent background or not because there is no background to worry about. So we're just gonna go ahead and select page two. And I'm gonna download that. So now I've got my frame and my mask. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump over to Photo P just really quick to do the clipping mask. Um, oops, don't worry if that happens, by the way. Um, it filled the background because it was larger than the entire page. So whenever you put something on there, it's larger than the entire page. If you clip away or click away, it will automatically fill the background. Not that that matters. If you want to, you can always click on it, right click, and hit detach from background and it'll detach it from the background that way. So don't worry if you do that. I'm gonna jump over to PhotoP now. So I'm on PhotoP. If you haven't used it, just go ahead and put photop.com into your browser. This page should come up. From here, we're just gonna click open from computer. It'll pull up your downloads. We are gonna go ahead and go with our vacay mode on frame and open that. And so here is my vacay mode frame. Looks like I might have missed a spot there. Okay. By the way, if you missed a spot, it would be really easy to go back in and just, you know, touch it up. Um, I'm not super worried. Those are really small spots. So we're going to go ahead here. I'm going to go to the top left where it says file. Three spaces down. I'm going to hit open in place. It's going to pull up my downloads again. This time I'm going to click my tie-dye mask and open that. And it should put my tie-dye mask right on top of my frame. So over here, I've got my two layers. Here's my tie-dye mask, and it's right on top of my background layer, which is my frame. From here, I'm gonna go up to File, move to the right until I hit Layer. About halfway down, you'll see Clipping Mask. Go ahead and click that, and it's gonna put my clipping mask right on top of my letters here. And so that is perfect. And that's all I needed Photo P4, so I'm just gonna go ahead and export this now. So at the top left-hand corner where it says File, I can click that, and about halfway down it'll say Export As. Go ahead and select PNG. Give it a second, and a little box will pop up with all the details. One sec, there it is. It's gonna have the, the title here, so if you wanna retitle it at this point, you can. Still a PNG, still 4500 by 5400 pixels. Don't really have to do anything, just hit Save and it will download that for you, and then you can jump right back over to Canva, so it really should be that fast. So jumping back over to Canva now, I'm gonna go ahead and upload what I just exported from PhotoP. So I'm gonna go over to the left-hand tabs where it says Uploads, and I'm gonna go Upload Files. And from here, I'm just gonna select my, um, my vacay mode on tie-dye one. Okay, there it is, so there's my vacay mode on, and I'm gonna put it right Whoop. right here on this page. And so I'm gonna go ahead and crop it in just a little bit from the bottom so it doesn't fill the whole page. I don't want it to lock to the background. But other than that, I'm just gonna go ahead and drag it over. And you should see now it pretty much lines up with the lettering I had before. So now if I was to take this and go ahead and send it to back, um, 
So I'm just using my keys here. It's controlled and it's the left bracket um, to send to back. Otherwise you can always right click and go to layer. And then from layer, you can send to back. So that's another way to do it. You can also click on it and go to position up top. And then from here you can put, you know, send to back or forward. So there's different ways that you can go about doing that. And so now what I've done is I've sent my tie dye to the back. So now you can just go ahead and see the layering here is on front. And now from here with the, uh, the, um, the lettering, I can go ahead and just change the color of the lettering to anything I want. So let's say I wanted it to be white. Now you can see how that works. So now I've got this nice white um, kind of shadow around it. And it's it's literally just sitting right on top of my tie dye. And so this is an easy way to do it. But like I said, there are some really cool um, fonts. They might be a little bit more challenging to work with and they might take a little bit of time, but there are some fonts that have lines within them, things that make them look like bubbles or a little bit more decorative. So if you've got the time to play with some of those, you can you know, definitely make some really cool um, style designs. I can show you really quick some of the ones I was talking about and just in the outline section, if you were to just go ahead and again, just kind of look through some of the outlined ones. Let me come down to another page here just to show you. I'm gonna pull up a text box and I'm gonna hit VK. Just cause I wanted you to sort of see some of the different ones that had a little bit more detail so you could see what I was talking about. Let me see if I can find one that's a little bit more decorative. So like here's one where if we were to fill in this area with the tie dye, you can see you could have little lines on it, but this is gonna be a little harder to work with because we're talking about smaller areas, but that's one that I had looked at some engraved ones. You can do the hatched ones too, and the tie dye will show up underneath all these little hatch lines. So those are also ones that you can work with. Inline ones probably wouldn't work so well because they don't have a solid line there. But there's lots of different decorative style designs. And so if you play with some of these, some of these are really cool, but they're just gonna take you a little bit longer, a little bit more time, but definitely worth looking at some of them. Here's one that might look cool. So this is gonna give you sort of that cow print over it. And so what we can do is fill the inside of this in with something like, oh, I don't know, white or pink. And you can get that sort of cow print look. And so that's one that you could use. And that one actually probably wouldn't be too hard to work with. And there's some bubbly looking ones too. Um, so anyways, you can look, there's a ton of different ones. Again, just try to make sure you get some nice thick lines to work with, because if you don't have thick lines, it becomes really difficult to kind of get it right around the edges. And so that was just my point there that I wanted to make. By the way, if I was to take this and let's say, I couldn't, I could, if I wanted to put a clipping mask on this, it would just be a clipping mask on the outside because you can't put a clipping mask where there isn't anything. So because this text is hollow, I couldn't fill it in that way. If I put a clipping mask on this, I would just get the outline. Now it doesn't mean that you couldn't go ahead and use solid text, by the way. And let me just go to anything solid, doesn't matter. Here's something nice and solid. It's not quite as solid as I want. Hold on, let me scroll down and get something really solid. Ooh, there we go, vacay. Now I could have something solid like this, put a clipping mask on it, and then go ahead and either use some photo effects to add a shadow onto it that way, or while I'm on my text effects here, I mean, I could add, not so, I could add a shadow and it would look something relatively similar, but if I was to bring the text close together here, you can see my outline now does not go over the letter ahead of it. So let me do this. So get rid of that. You can see how the outline or the shadow here goes over the letter in front, which is what I liked about this. You won't get that if you just use a shadow on your text. So it'll go to the back. Same thing if you were to just save it as a photo and then put a shadow on it, you would get a shadow around the whole thing, but not you know, each letter overlapping into the next. So there isn't a way to do this without doing what I did, but you can get close a lot easier by just using something like a regular text and then just adding a shadow. 
So again, choose wisely. It is a little bit more of a time consuming method. So, you know, make sure that you're picking a font that you couldn't do any other way. You know, it would have to be something that's a little bit more decorative or something that has, you know, sort of these overlapping shadows that I couldn't get any other way. Um, but that's it. Really cool, fun way to do it. Um, if you have any other questions about how to get things done that you're not quite sure, drop it in the comments section below. Um, if I know the answer, I will try to get back to you. If not, you know, I'll try to look into it for sure. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you guys are still being as creative as you can. Um, and again, I hope you're doing well. It is, uh, what it, we are at quarter two now, so we're starting to do our quarter two style designs. But again, just make sure that you also still have plenty of evergreens up. That's it for today's video. If you found this useful and would like to see more videos with helpful tips and tricks, be sure to hit like and subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss any of the weekly videos. As always, keep growing and stay creative, and we'll see you next time.